continuing the uh, tradition of promising nothing and delivering less, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've decided to change our plans slightly. Slightly. Uh, so if the Matt and me from like 20 seconds ago just said, hey, we're going to go back for the other endings... I guess we should let you know that that was, uh, in the end, it was an untruth. At the time, it was a truth, but... Um, it was it was an ambitious plan. It was an ambitious plan. <laughs> so, let, let's, let's try to explain this as best we can. Um, we wrapped up after that video, after that recording, and we had a plan. Matt was going to take a look at the spoilers. He was going to dig his hands into the spoilers. Deep and, and into the spoiler out. meat. Yeah, figure out how to how to you know do all the other endings and and also take a look and see which ones are worthwhile because we did notice that you know ending B and C that we got were like pretty similar. Yeah, you know they were different but pretty similar. And well, I mean Matt, he pretty much told me when we met back up to record, he was like, "Ooh, they're all they're they're shockingly similar to what we got." Yeah. And uh yeah. Honestly, so since everyone already saw it in the first episode, the the biggest, weirdest, most different ending is uh, J Wow just noping the fuck out <laughs> and getting into the car. Like that's a crazy ending. She, she she cowered it out and drove away and failed at that. Even yeah, like <laughs> I, I, the worst. I guess back in the day you wouldn't really know to do this, but it's like yeah, that was a stinger at the end of like a long, a fairly long credit sequence. So I could see someone like turning it off. Maybe you can skip it by pressing <laughs> yeah, start. Yeah. I'm not really sure, but that's the ending, and I'm sure most clock tower uh, uh, aficionados would would know this. But like yeah, every other ending after that is essentially in the state of being in the cave or right after the cave where you're going into the elevator, it's just variants thereof where uh, yeah. J-Wow gets killed in some way or one of your friends survives. But unfortunately, you don't get any additional story stuff or dialogue out of any of these endings. A little bit, maybe a line here a, and there. A, a little bit, but not nothing really meaningful. So, um, so right now you might be seeing some footage and wondering and be wondering what this footage is uh this is uh from a youtube channel uh that uh had all the endings uploaded and uh buffmeister I, buffmeister thank you buffmeister for for doing this um <laughs> uh so i i think matt will probably cut out the endings we've seen so you guys could take a peek at them and you'll see that they're pretty pretty similar two of them like involve you basically dying just before the ending sequence we would have gotten to so they don't even get as far as the ending yeah um yeah so so after matt told me about this i took a look as well because i was like no surely surely at least one of these must be like really interesting and different and yeah he was right unfortunately uh matt unfortunately was telling the truth this time and <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah they were samey enough that we were like is a full playthrough is also yeah the conditions for getting the other endings are you know very specific in some ways matt you were explaining to me that like you have to keep certain characters alive by avoiding certain rooms yeah and it depends on which character either Anne or laura that you know, I think ending S is you keep Anne alive. I honestly forget because one of them, their their uh, character models are uh, yeah, it's Anne I think for ending S, where yeah, you just have to avoid that kill scene that like you know either in the bathroom or the pool or you know uh, or the the skylight I think when um, Scissor Man mm. comes down with uh, doing his Devil May Cry shit, um. And you just have to avoid that room, but do everything else that you need to do. You know, get the perfume, get the robe, get into the cave, et cetera, mm -hmm, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And what changes? That character stands with you at the clock tower with the rain, and they just proceed to stare off and disassociate from from. They don't talk. <laughs> they don't do anything. And we also learn that basically endings uh, A, B, and C, or I believe it could have been A, B, and S, were those are all considered the canon endings where like those are all an end state that the sequel game kind of 
you know, like it doesn't really matter which one it was. Yeah, it's, there's you know, nothing too one crazy. Of those three. Uh, Mary yeah. either dies well, in a certain way where she just falls off, like fa- yeah. falls off the scaffolding, gets electrocuted. Uh, what was the one I told you where she falls off in a hilarious way that you liked? Oh yeah, you you told. So the so one one fun sounding one was apparently one of the final scenarios is that the the crows can actually. Uh, knock Mary off the platform, flutter her off. The murderer of crows commits a murder. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's cool that they get to come back and do that, but ultimately, uh, ninety plus percent of the ending is is virtually the same as ending A, uh, ending sorry ending B and C, which we already got before. So it, um, and I assume we, that's yeah. because Mary was sacrificing the crows. Like you saw the crow bodies here and there. Yeah, yeah. And it just they were the ritual things yeah. for the ritual. And I just assume that you know it, it always comes back to the old adage that uh, that actions have consequences, pimp. And that you should, should never yeah, just just assume <laughs> that that sacrificial animals or whatever it is won't come back to haunt you in some way. Mm. I guess she didn't know she was in Clock Tower, and there's like nine possible endings. She should have known that that, <laughs> that trope of like the subjugated animal getting revenge yeah. is always like kind of a fun one. So you know, there's definitely still stuff where it's like I wonder if Mr. Burroughs had any other dialogue and stuff. But after like yeah, after looking at the endings and after you know, evaluating like, okay, we're going to have to basically just do another playthrough that is almost the same as like our most successful playthrough, but we just have to like reload our save if we accidentally kill someone or God forbid, if we do something wrong, we have to start again. Um, yeah, then just did not. Then we'd actually have to chart it. out with a map for sure because so many hallways yeah. look the same. Well, you've been drawing a map, right? I, we have confirmed in previous parts it was not drawing a map. Um, <laughs> and I, some rooms are randomized on top of that. So. Yeah, uh, which is something we kind of only realized like halfway through that. Yeah, certain rooms like rotate essentially on the map, which is cool. Again, when you say like this was a Super Nintendo game, and I'm just like that's. Just it just yeah, it doesn't seem like the Super clever. Nintendo or a 16-bit console could do that. I know that's weird to say, but like <laughs> it just it just kind of impressed me on a technical I, level. I mean, it could definitely do it because like it's not changing any. You know, like the rooms don't physically have to move, but but yeah, people weren't doing that back then. Like you were you were saying this before that just like you found the game. I mean, me too. Found the game super impressive, just like creatively for the era. You know, I mean, they were definitely other adventure games and point and click adventure games you know coming out back then you know but it, this sort of game on the super nintendo back then like wow it was pretty you know yeah ahead of its time in a lot of ways i still love how much of the game doesn't really have music like, that's that's a bold choice back then yeah um, but i guess it's a it's a horror movie thing like you know there's a silence yeah. and then a swell of music when something actually does happen like you know jump a jump like audio based jump scare and like yeah i know we were playing the playstation version there were some things technically that like you know there's the opening little uh video at the very 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 beginning and um you know some like new sound effects or whatever i am still a little not miffed i guess but trying to figure out why there were some weird audio bugs whether it were it was due to the playstation or the translated uh patched version of this cuz mm-hmm. uh some people were saying that like yeah that doesn't happen in the super nintendo version and but you know, I, I just kind of assume this PlayStation version was the best one. And that seems to now I assume this is what we don't we didn't actually really check. But the, what the way forward uh, remaster coming out next year is based on, mm-hmm. I assume it'll be like a neat combination of everything because they do that with the I, carbon yeah, engine I, nowadays. I assume. Oh, oh, you're saying like you think you're you're wondering if it will have the SNES and the PS1. And yeah. The... So, for example, in I, River City I, Girls I, Zero, I, they added yeah. that that opening animated intro oh, yeah, that's the, not in the, the Super com- Nintendo version, you know, like stuff like yeah, that yeah. is what I mean. I assume they're just going to take the PS1, like all the the best version of the game and touch it up and stuff. I don't think in this case, like I don't think it's admittedly i have not actually played the snes version myself but from what i know i don't think it's actually worth it to do both of them right like just do the ps1 one nice and you kind of get it all in one go yeah i, I think so. like there's the wondrous one one which is a cool curio but i think there's a lot of stuff cut from it 
I actually find it so cool that there's a like a full Wonderswan port port of it. Yeah, uh, uh, Grunkle probably really Grunkle expensive. Derek did a video on it, and I, that's when so I first even did. knew about it. I was like, "Holy shit!" There's a Wonderswan version, and it's actually like yeah. pretty comparable. Like, yeah, it's uglier and it's slower, <laughs> obviously, but uh, it still has multiple endings and all that. I believe. I want to look up how much that thing costs because honestly, that thing is probably through the roof at this point. Uh, <laughs> I whenever I'm. Uh, at a at a like a game store here and i see i'm looking through wonder swan games because it's what i do um whenever i see the silent hill wonder swan game i always have to like remind myself this is a visual novel you can't play it it's too advanced the japanese is too advanced for you please put it back you know yeah that always makes me sad because like a 2d adaptation yeah and and yeah, it doesn't seem that expensive i mean 80 dollars for a loose cartridge i mean i in assume the american uh uh, seller's market. I should see if I can find a copy in Japan. I assume a lot of Wonder Swan it. games are still like, you know, not inexpensive, like just because it's rare in general. It, it, there's there's still a lot of cheap games on Wonder Swan, okay. but like it's the consoles have gotten like way expensive in Japan. It's fucked. When I when I uh, first went to Japan in 2008, I remember I came back with four or five Wonder Swans. Uh, because I, I I had some friends who like you know the Game Boy and stuff, and I gave them Wonder Swans because you could buy regular Wonder Swans originals for like ten like ten dollars. You never like gave nothing. me one of these Wonder um, Swans. No, I didn't because I didn't think you really liked the Game Boy all that much. Oh, I thought um, I thought you were gonna say it's well because I hadn't met you for years yet. And oh, yeah, it was two thousand eight. It's true. I and hadn't met you. Then I had to prepare yeah. that I was gonna say that's your excuse for everything. Yeah, that's, Matt, okay, I wasn't well, even alive. And I said that I wasn't even born at the time, exactly. <laughs> um, but now it's like way, way more expensive to buy a Wonder Swan in Japan. It's mm. gross. It's like, damn, us foreigners really ruined it. We really Forever, ruined as the, we the, do. the retro market. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, anyway, I um, wanted to yeah. ask: Have you played the the yeah. actual sequel, like the three D one that was on the PlayStation? I do. You have any exposure <laughs> to it? Yes, because when I went to, quote unquote, buy this game to play it on our totally legitimate PS1, mm. uh, when I got the lending yes. link, I I got the wrong lending link. I downloaded the game titled Clock Tower, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, and when I booted it up to see if it worked, it was not Clock Tower. It was a different game. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. So yeah, on PS on PS1... Yeah, the original Clock Tower is subtitled The First Fear, I think. And yeah, so the sequel, Clock Tower, is just called Clock Tower. It's, but that might only be in America It's or a bit of a Final Fan early Final Fantasy situation because the Super Nintendo version did not come out in English, right? Like, mm -hmm. so... It did not, but, yeah. But the, the sequel on the PlayStation did... Mm -hmm. But since there was no first one in Japan, it's like Clock Tower 2. But when it did come to North America on the PlayStation, they couldn't call it Clock Tower 2 because there was no one. So I assume it's... Right. So in Japan, they called it Clock Tower 2. And here they called it Clock Tower. But then they or, came I out with Clock Tower you know. 2, The Struggle Within. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which which was renamed to Clock Tower Ghost Head. Yeah. It, the which was Clock Tower Ghost Head in Japan. It's so confusing. Um, and it's really bad. Yeah, it's really um, bad, that one. I, you know, personally, I hope we can definitely check those out in in the future because it was really fun to do Clock Tower 3. And it was uh, this first Clock Tower was also great. Yeah. So I, I'd be super interested to see, him, for, see it all through For now. those that don't know that, like, uh, didn't check on the main channel. And if you're, if you're like, just a fan of the gameplay channel, yeah. here at Flophouse Place, over on the main channel, uh, like, I want to say two, almost three years ago, uh, yeah, me and Liam play Clock Tower 3, which fortunately doesn't have anything to do with Clock Tower 1 or 2, other than you play as a girl yeah. and you're dodging killers. Um, and I think there's you wanna, an actual... You want to feel old? Play that in 2019. Sorry, go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's about when I thought. Um, and that was like a super good time. And much like this, this first Clock Tower, it's like we need an actual... Um, 
a movie cinematographer to direct the cutscenes, and that's mm, why the cutscenes yeah. are so crazy um, in Clock Tower Three. Like whenever you're dodging a killer and there's like story revelations, it's like crazy unique camera angles, and it's all mo capped, which was still you know fairly new at the time, like 2003 ish, you know. Um, I, I love how overacted it all is, too. Oh, yeah. Like, it's a little silly in practice, but in retrospect, it really adds a lot of character. Yeah, like, it does. And I feel I feel very positively about it, despite how silly that game is on the whole. Compared to Clock Tower, the original Clock Tower's, like, relative seriousness. Like, yeah. obviously, there's some there's some goofy subject matter, but the actual tone of Clock Tower is dead serious, and I... I, I I loved it. I think I was, when you get to the PS2 yeah. era, a lot of survival horror games are almost always kind of like a little silly here and there. Like, you know, like when it comes to cutscenes or voice acting, whatever it is. So when like there was a horror game on the Super Nintendo and it was very closely, I, I mentioned this in a previous episode, but like people were able to say a bit more and I looked at it a bit more. It's like, this is really based on that movie that uh, Dario Argento uh, Italian horror movie phenomenon, phenomena, phenomenon, mm -hmm. whatever that Jennifer whatever Connelly was, was in. Yeah. It's like, there's a lot of like direct homages to it. So for, you know, the entire series, like, like I said, clock tower three, it's like, you know, that they want to model it after, you know, the movies of the day. So I think Clock Tower 3 is like maybe, you know, modeled after like late 90s, early 2000s, sort of like horror things where things were a little bit more over the top and, and such and not as psychologically. Because, yeah, it's a lot of and plus, of course, amazing uh, magical girl transformations kind of seals the deal yeah, on Clock was... Tower 3. Yeah, that was like certainly an an odd one but i i, I agree with we it. appreciate that was, it, was it the though. era at the time yeah. you know yeah we appreciate it for what it is <laughs> and, uh, and just before it's... i forget it's like also um if if you watch that lp of uh, clock tower three or just like interested in the game in general uh, Ra uh ragnar rocks did a great video kind of discussing clock tower three uh why clock hmm. tower three is the perfect playable slasher movie um Perfect playable slasher movie huh that's that's interesting because remember it also worked in like there was an overall plot but then there was like monster of the weeks that we had to defeat yeah, like little like cases a bunch of villains yeah yeah it was like three or four and then like the main one remember the, remember the two the, the the one um connection to clock towers we had to fight those two magical twins those evil twins that both yeah, had scissors yeah, yeah. That yeah, that I was remember, that yeah. was a that was a fun the hell of a game. That was a fun question mark fight against the. <laughs> yeah, um, I definitely think now that I've played the original, I like the original a lot better. I far prefer it to Clock Tower Three. Yeah, it's, but it's Clock fun. Tower Three has certainly got a certainly got a vibe to it. <laughs> Good memories of that one for sure. Yeah, so Clock Tower. Yeah. to the first 3d one on the playstation um like i've only played that a little bit so i'm pr I, I, out of all of them i'm pretty intrigued by that one because i have played the mm -hmm. super nintendo clock tower a little bit here and there throughout the years just like an emulation you know curiosity like oh let's check this out um you can only really get so far especially like in the early 2000s i think when i first played mm -hmm. it and being like that's neat on the super nintendo um and it's it's just kind of a shame how just like the confusion of the releases of the of you know this and the sequel on the PlayStation, and then it just somehow moving t all towards Capcom and Capcom doing something very different with it, and then of course you know years and years later, uh, Nightcry doesn't really yeah. hold up. Like, listen, the creature Nightcry is a real bummer. The creature in Nightcry, the Scissor Walker, like, yeah, like, looks super yeah, cool. I agree. Uh, but other also, than that, also the, the premise, the scenario, the yeah, boat, yeah, like yeah, yeah. that, like also like the main character being so different from the other. I, I actually think aesthetically, there's a lot of uh, really good choices. Remember, in Nightcry. characters. Yeah, you're right. Characters, yeah, uh, that is that is correct. <laughs> I I believe no one's ever gotten past the boat. <laughs> they always quit <laughs> and give up because it's yeah, so annoying to have to do so much of it. I do think if someone was to like re remaster a Nightcry, do a lot of fixes, like you said, the core concept and like some things are. I, I think you could make something better, like with what was made, but it just seems like they kind of 
stopped updating it or or fixing it because uh, you, well, you've talked yeah, a bit I've, about the Vita version. Maybe that's not fixable. I don't know why you would. You you know. I, I I could talk about that one for a while actually because I mean I imagine they stopped updating it on the whole because yeah. like probably when that game came out you know word got around pretty quick that it was rough even on the PC version yeah, people yeah. the reception was was pretty poor. Um, the Vita version, man, I, I feel like I could talk talk your ear off about that one. But like, yeah, the Vita version is rough. I I actually did a lot of um, work in Unity on the Vita uh, for a couple years. You remember uh, some of the, the some of the projects that I worked on mm-hmm, that never mm-hmm. shipped or anything. I, I've never shown them off publicly, but I I did a lot of work on like 3D environments and stuff on the Vita in Unity and unity on the vita is quite limited like unity has a certain baseline memory requirement that isn't really an issue on newer machines but the vita's you know limited uh so like yeah unity is kind of demanding on the vita but even so i was kind of shocked at how bad it ran on the vita Mm. i i get the set this was their first project as a group in unity as far as i know i think so i definitely get the sense that they could have used like a special like a unity specialist engineer to optimize it a bit better because even on pc it's the optimization is rough and i i i think that carried over and had an even worse knock-on effect on the vita where the optimization is oof it's I, i i don't presume to say that if i was sitting there i could have fixed it because uh, I'm not so <laughs> egotistical, but there's definitely things when I play that Vita version of Nightcry where I'm like, "Ooh, there's a there's a checkbox to improve that." Like I I know I know where the setting is that improves that. Mm-hmm. Like, damn, it's a it's a shame because uh, that version could have been neat, and instead it's it's terrible. I encourage you, if you can, I encourage you to pipe in some footage of that version because like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll uh, try. The, it, there's an uh, there's a quirk to to all versions of the game where when you examine objects, like it has to load the voice line at that moment right. or like whatever. It has to load the animation or whatever it was. Um, and that happens in all versions. But again, because the Vita version is like, you know, a little rougher, a little less optimized. There are situations where you like examine something in the environment. Your character will walk over to it and then you'll have a loading screen for like five to ten seconds. They will have... You know, the camera will sort of animate, look at it. It'll say something, you know, one or two lines. And then you'll have a loading screen. And then you'll be back in the gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. Um, you can certainly play through the game, which I have not done. I have not succeeded at finishing it. But I, I would uh, love to do that in the future as hey, everyone watch us play the this. Version. No, no. I, I, <laughs> I, everyone watch, like maybe after, like if we're ever to play uh, Clock Tower 2, for example. Get through uh, it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know. Um, yeah. I, I actually wouldn't want to play uh, uh, Ghost Head because I have played a lot of Ghost Head and it's, it's actually just unfun and not scary. Like, not even. Uh, like of the day like what was achievable like with like you know sure, sure. thing like it's actually just kind of like sucks and i think it it's also another uh case of another story like it doesn't it made there might be some thin story connections but you don't play as like a uh, J- uh, jennifer or anything um sure i did yeah but like maybe in the future like play the pc version of nightcry and just j- just to see or whatever like actually me i could like finish it finish have, it and then we could have some world exclusive footage of the ending yeah because i never ever i know that there's other characters in it but i've never seen them apparently you go to like a, a crashed <laughs> island like a desert island that's whoa after really? the crash of the 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 ship and when you no play a different character, yeah, it's, no, nobody knows about this stuff. It's like secret I knew, content. I knew there's another character, but yeah, I, I've never, uh, yeah, I've yeah. never seen it either, obviously. Uh, and, so. and also, it's not One day. it's not just uh, relegated to the game itself, like the what was produced. Like, there's a video um, on a YouTube channel. Uh, this lady, uh, Teng- uh, Tango Mushi, made a video called Night Cry, The Biggest Train Wreck in Survival Horror History. Which at first I was like, oh, come on. But then when Sounds I really, harsh, no, yeah. I was like, come on. But yeah. then I really thought about it. I was like, it might be actually like, I was trying to think of other survival horror games that like were that maligned and it's, it's gotta be up there. Right. 
um, somewhere. I think I think it was in a tough position in that regard, where like Nightcry was so, you know, dead on targeting this like, specific thing, re- retro, like a, a certain subset of like retro survival horror yeah. goodness, and like yeah, that so you- having that group of people. Subject to, you know, the initial versions of Nightcry, especially before it started getting updates. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, yeah, that probably did create a pretty. Yeah, yeah. hostile uh, I, and I'm, negative environment. Sorry, what was it? What was the video's uh, qualifier again? Uh, ten, the, Tango Mushi, uh, Nightcry, the biggest uh, train wreck. Yeah, in Star history. the biggest train wreck. Mm, um, I mean, definitely because... like the most. Maybe some of the most outcry. It, for... It's it's because like one of the bigger sections of the video is like here's how badly the Kickstarter campaign was run, and like I didn't know about any of this stuff. So when I watched it, it's like it's it's all the hallmarks of no one got the special editions, it, no one people paid for them, uh, very few people actually got them. You know that it's it's like you know a poorly run Kickstarter, unfortunately. And to be fair though, this was pretty early on. And I like, I want to say what, like 2014. Sure, sure. So like, you know, it's still a big, huge undertaking. Um, people not really realizing how much it costs to get everything manufactured, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, things, there's a bit more um, scrutiny when projects don't go well yeah. nowadays. And back then, uh, you know, lots I, of things yeah. would go really, really poorly early on, even much bigger projects than night cry you know so i definitely have a lot of sympathy for you know the people running kickstarters because yeah like those expenses add up real fast especially for physical shit yeah oof yeah but like people looking not at, getting looking at some of the things promised yeah people not Incent getting properly reimbursed is, uh... or yeah no of course it's not okay yeah no. man they didn't have a lot of money for this no the, the, was... i mean obviously i don't know what they had off the book but on kickstarter uh, 2,408 backers pledged 314,700-ish dollars. What was its goal? That's, that doesn't go far. What was its goal? Uh, I, don't, I actually don't know what the oh, goal is. It doesn't. Anymore? It doesn't oh, $300,000. Whoa. So it Barely only passed it. the goal by like uh, just about fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars 15000 Wow. Yeah, I, I, I remember being excited for this back in the day. Not because I was a huge Clock Tower fan, but because, you know, it was just survival horror stuff here's a new survival horror thing and i think the the uh that's um the the Masahiro Ito. exactly yeah. they they were like i'm gonna uh, design a scissor head uh the scissor walker and then the director slash creator of jew on the grudge was like i'm gonna be directing the the cutscenes. so it was like kind of this like you know dream team of of horror uh, creators yeah. and it's just kind of like yeah Nightcry. We're talking more about Nightcry than Clock Tower. I know eh? it's crazy. Man reading this Kickstarter originally planned and announced for iOS, Android and Vita. I'm like oh yeah what an era that was. Yeah like, and those phone versions the, never the came Vita out. Being the... Oh really they never I came out? I didn't so. know that. I believe it was just the Vita and PC. Wow okay and the Vita version yeah oh, that came in fucking yeah. hot. The Vita version you may not know this but it came out with like no fanfare eh? like it really just like appeared one day mm. and it was just out on the shop and that was that was that i, I believe uh, how this worked was that it was going to be an end like a mobile phone thing exclusive and then fans started complaining you know, you know complaining demanding yeah like, it, so much that it wasn't going to be on pc was, at first it yeah. wasn't going to be like on pc or console or something that wasn't phone and then i think maybe the um uh, the the entire campaign was built more or less around that. Like, okay, well, this is to fund those extra versions, I think. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, it 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 is it is definitely up there in like a top ten of like survival horror. Like this, this did not go well type thing. Given the the people involved, I guess. But like you said, it's such a specific thing that you were creating, and yeah. and there was no, uh, there's very few other things to model it after, especially like in terms of a Kickstarter. So it's kind of, I, I mean, it, it, it reminds me of like Shenmue three, which I don't think is as much of a disaster as, as this much? one no. was where it's just like, yeah, I mean, these people had a very specific game sort of quote unquote promise to them. I mean, obviously, you know, creatively it's going to be different and stuff, but like effectively night cry was going to be a clock tower and it came out and it was a bad clock tower. So it's like, yeah, no kidding that, that, uh, and, Kinda, it, it, it could qualify for that 
Stalker, possibly. I mean, there's wor- there's worse. There's probably worse horror games out there. Oh, wor- and there's worse for sure. Game- yeah, yeah. There's games like Callisto that like got really bad. You know, Callisto Protocol that got like savaged when they came out, and also in that case, savaged by way more people as well. Like Night Cry was yeah, still and pretty more niche. Money considered. was on the line, obviously, because yeah. like yeah, that developer seems to be like barely st- struggling, and like the you know people are leaving that developer. A lot and, of like, layoffs. Yeah. And so Sheffield like in terms left, of like think, overall yeah. money disaster, it's like yeah, it's certainly yeah. a, a bit more prevalent. And like kind of like uh, Shenmue Three, it's kind of like I think. The Clock Tower creator Hifumi Kono, like, like, didn't make all that much in between. Kind of like Yu Suzuki when Yu Suzuki left Sega, like, made one or two things, but they weren't successes. So there's kind of like a lull in maybe like I don't know, just game design. In Hifumi Kono's case, it's like he worked on Steel Battalion, then did some stuff on Infinite Space. Oh, here I, I got, I got the list. Got I got the, the list, list here. Um, so yeah, I'll just start from Steel Battalion. Steel Battalion, 2002, director. La- Steel Battalion, Line of Contact, 2004, director. Michigan Report from Hell. Really? Uh, it's same year, 2004. He has a credit as ADAPT. A-D-A-P-T. Okay. I have no idea what that means. Uh, so I, he An- probably didn't have a huge role on that. that, that is, um, that's going to be represented but, this month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big jump from 2004 to 2009, Infinite Space Director. So, hey, kudos to that, because that's a hell of a game. Uh, I love seeing the Platinum Games logo in its, like, compressed Nintendo DS form. Oh, it yeah, looks yeah, great. Yeah, I know the time. It's, it's the beautiful, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, jump all the way to 20, uh, 2016, so seven years later, Night Cry. Director and script. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a shame, you know, I, one wonders if they'd have had more money, if, if, if they'd have been able to pull it off, because $300,000, even if they had, you know, other financial backing, it's, it's not, a, that doesn't, that doesn't go far. Yeah, $300,000 is know. absolutely for other work. Like the game is mostly made or funded and that's to like do ports, other stuff, make physical, like that's su- like support extra money. Well, like plus that's too you know low. of that 300k like even like terrible napkin math like probably 60 plus thousand went to kickstarter and reward stuff you know like so it's... actually interestingly enough when i look at it uh i don't see the other clock towers like he has no credits on them Aside from he just did the first two, right? I, like, well, the, like Clock Tower, uh, PlayStation, Windows. I don't think he did Clock Tower two, the the three D PlayStation one. No, that so can't he did, be right. He did work on Moonlight Syndrome, which yeah, is cool. yeah, yeah. not a Clock Tower game, obviously, but a lot of shared DNA there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, I don't see yeah. Clock Tower two, which is like just kind of funny because I I thought that was like a like definitely worked on that because it, it it has the same characters I believe and definitely not Ghost. Yeah, it's interesting and definitely not Clock Tower three. Oh no, like, yeah, well, uh, Capcom era. I mean, yeah, um, hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, it's a good thing we don't have to talk about that game for another few years. <laughs> <laughs> well you'll have your day night cry i guess so but do let us uh know in the comments like you know if there's a particular clock tower you should like focus on maybe like you know next halloween whatever it is but uh i you're, I, you're begging for trouble because people are going to be like play devil head play I'm devil not, head no, fucker I, and then we're going to be stuck playing them out no, of order no, 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 on no, top like, of it more people will be like play night cry no i need to see that night versus cry, yeah. devil head because like yeah devil head yeah. is bad is in boring bad and night cry is just bad which is the my, bad my desire want. to do all of them will eventually compel it yeah or or what? you know like uh uh do a second run on clock tower three <laughs> <laughs> yeah why that one doesn't even have a fucking no, we yeah still gotta, before that we still have to do like legacy of darkness first if we're gonna do a second God, run yeah, on anything that's, that's i don't know one. why you're so obsessed. life is strange 2 episode 5 it's coming one day coming i mean one day you know it's funny before i moved to japan remember we had talked about we recorded a bunch of gameplay we like did. gamecube games and stuff and we discussed doing life is strange 2 episode 5 before leaving uh and now it's like well i guess it's gonna be a few years (laughs) 
one day one day one day but anyway uh, yeah thank, thank you guys for i hope you guys enjoyed clock tower i thought it was a fucking banger of a game super fun yeah really interesting really, like even though like it's even though the plot is so basic like y- you know it's sort of because it was obviously one of the early takes on that sort of thing and they really nailed it like they really landed everything they were going for i found definitely uh, I was very impressed by it. I hope you liked it as well. I did. So this is this is uh, Matt Liam signing off for more spooky stuff. But yeah, there's one more video that one of those videos you mentioned that we recorded beforehand. Uh, before, got one more left before you left for a glorious Nippon. We uh, that, you know that'll be coming up. I mentioned it earlier in this in this very video. So oh, uh, I see. There's, I see. there's still lots of uh, <laughs> aw- <Yeah>. awkward <laughs> uh, awkward horror stuff <laughs> coming up, and it's most, it's probably the most awkward game of all. So do look forward to that. That's where it's at. Yeah, <laughs> awkward horror is the best horror. I will look forward to it. Well, thank you for inviting me to play another spooky Halloween game. Hopefully we can manage this again from Japan next year, too. Hopefully. Hopefully. (laughs) Well, it looks like you've grown up, too, Dennis. Oh, come on. That was then and this is now. Wait a minute, would you?